Hello everyone and welcome back to the NPC Dungeon. Today we're continuing where we left off last week with my series on types of adventures. If you haven't watched the first one yet, feel free to. I'll leave a link below and a card up above if you want to, but if you haven't or just don't want to, that's fine too. You don't have to have watched the previous episode in the series to understand this one. For those of you who don't know, this series is just going to be me kind of talking about various types of adventures and quests in a very stream of consciousness kind of way, going over what they are, how they work, and how I might do them. I'll also give a few examples of each, mainly for the purpose of giving you all a little bit of inspiration. Maybe you're stuck on an idea for your own campaign, maybe you're a little burned out and need a little help, or maybe you just want to learn about different adventures to help you come up with ideas down the road. Either way, I think you've come to the right place, so let's get started and let's learn something. First up are bounty hunting missions. This is one of the simplest setups out there. Someone needs to be arrested and your players are asked to do it, but don't underestimate it just because of its simple appearance. I find that a lot of these simpler setups give you a lot of room to play around with. For example, it doesn't have to be the law asking your players for help. If you're running a more criminal underground or evil type of campaign, it could simply be an enemy of whatever group the players are loyal to. These can even very easily become assassination missions, but again, let's try to subvert this. Assassination missions don't have to necessarily exist in evil campaigns. Your players could be called to help resolve some kind of conflict, and one the only solutions present to them is an assassination. This might translate into a kind of moral dilemma where the players have to choose between going along with it and getting the figure's favor, or sticking to their morals as it were and finding their own solution and risk losing the figure who presented this idea as an ally. And even then, why must this assassination or bounty hunt even take place? In the case of the bounty, who put the bounty on them and why? Was this person actually in trouble with the law, or did they just get on the wrong person's bad side? Maybe this person owes the wrong person money, and when the players get to them, they realize they're not so bad after all, as they uncovered the true story. As you can see, bounty hunting and assassination missions in D&D can be great for moral dilemmas, but they can also be simple and straightforward. Maybe the person really is an evildoer after all, and the mission simply is to go and find them. In these cases, and even in the others as well I might add, you can still add complications and obstacles along the way. I mentioned in my videos on encounters that this is a tried and true method and my old technique. By the way, there'll be a link in the card to those videos if you want. I would give my players a mission to go to a place really, and stuff to do along the way. And this can be very easily worked into the story. Ask yourself, where's the person in question hiding? Do they have any allies who would help them? What is the relationship with those allies like? What else are they involved in? And the list goes on. And you can develop more questions based on what's going on in your campaign and how the person in question is important. Maybe they know something. Maybe they're the only one who could do something like open up an ancient power inside of an ancient ruin and as a result everyone wants them. So it's up to the players to figure out what to do. Or maybe they're revolutionary and that would definitely explain the bounty. And the possibilities from here are endless. Very similar structurally to bounty hunting and assassination missions, there are monster hunting missions. The first thing I ask myself when planning for this kind of adventure is, probably unsurprisingly, how does it fit into the story? Basically, who wants the monster hunted and why? The two most obvious answers, at least to me and the two that I most often come to, are maybe the monster is attacking a village or something and the people want it gone. The other is that someone wants an area like a lumber mill or a fishing spot cleared of a certain monster that has recently moved in. But there are others. Maybe the monster kidnapped someone. Maybe someone very wealthy and eccentric wants it to be part of the collection. Maybe someone just simply wants to see the monster or a scientist wants to examine it, or maybe it's part of a competition with other parties to see who can get to it first. And even then, what are the stipulations? You can add stipulations to pretty much any quest. Does the NPC want it dead or just relocated? Why? Is there a moral dilemma working in, lurking in the shadows? How much do the players know about the monster? These kind of questions can very easily evolve from mysteries. Your players might be asked to investigate damages or missing people and very quickly realize that a monster is behind it before figuring out what it is and tracking it down. Or maybe the monster is clever and it's actually hunting the players, and again the list goes on. And last on the list for today on the complete opposite end of the spectrum are diplomacy missions. This is any mission where the players are sent to peacefully settle some kind of dispute, or send a message of some kind. And we all know what the word peaceful means in D&D, so be ready for this one to devolve into madness pretty quickly. You might think that these generally work in more political style campaigns, or campaigns where your players are already established in the world and can be trusted with such tasks, but that assumes that diplomacy in this case only refers to political diplomacy. It could be a message between rival factions that the players may or may not be a part of. They might be opposing criminal syndicates, mercenary bands, kobold dens, goblin tribes, any combination and the list goes on, and you can work in as much political intrigue as your players can handle in these kinds of stories as well. And of course, all this depends on the campaign you're running and the players you have at the table. And that's it. I know it ended up being kind of short, but I still really hope that you liked it. If you did, feel free to leave a like, it lets me know what I'm doing well so I can best mold this channel to suit your needs. And if you really like this video, feel free to subscribe so that you know when I release new ones. I release new DM advice videos on Friday and a short every single day of the week. Also, if you have any questions, think I missed an important point, or just want to say hi, you are more than welcome to leave a comment. I almost always respond. Come back next week where I'll continue this series on types of adventures. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, let's learn something.